Israel. Shalom, Israel. Happy Sabbath. Uh, first off, giving our praises to the Most High and to His Son, Yahweh. We are battle axes of Most High, and today's class is five sixths of laws or five sections of laws. Because <clears throat> a lot of times people don't understand that it's it's five different sections of laws that we abide by as a nation of Israel. And that's what we're going to touch on today. Uh, give me Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. Book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. We're called to remember the the former days. Read that again. Huh? But call to remembrance the former days. So the Bible constantly tells us to call to remembrance the former days. Search the scriptures in the past and see what our forefathers did to get out of certain situations or what they did to handle certain situations. That's why we should always go to the scriptures for comfort. Because a lot of these things that they did in the past, guess what? They relate to us today. Read that again. Huh? But call to remembrance the former days. Mm -hmm. In which after ye were illuminated. In which what? Which after ye were illuminated. After we were illuminated. The word illuminated is to be enlightened or to be awoken. Because guess what? When we came into this truth, we were illuminated with these uh, laws, statutes, and commandments. Knowing that we're the Israelites that God's chosen people. You know, that we got to keep the, uh, the laws, statutes, and commandments. Read on now. Ye endured a great fight of affliction. Ye endured what? A great fight of affliction. Because when you wake up and come back to your true nationality and to God's law, statutes and commandments, guess what? You're going to endure great affliction in this society, man. You know, a lot of times people are having problems with putting out pork, smoking weed, drinking to get drunk, pouring the sisters out, and vice versa. You know, you're going to be afflicted when you come into this truth because when you come into this, you got to put off that flesh and put on that spiritual man. That's what this truth is all about. And that's what God laws helps help us do. Give me and understanding your enemies. You know, that's something they, they got to confront with themselves, too. Yeah, exactly. I, that's a good point, because a lot of times our people don't know who our enemy is. Israel, we have enemies out here. God has enemies, man. And when you come to this understanding of be illuminated, you will understand why we catching hell here. While we on the bottom, while we uh, 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 getting the worst foods of the barrel. So that's what we're going to touch on. <clears throat> First, let me ask you, what are the five, six of laws? Junior, what's the five, six of laws? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And what else? One more. Yep. Sacrificial. Uh, we got sacrificial, dietary, ceremonial, ceremonial silver. silver. One more. Do anybody else know? It's the moral laws. And that's what we're going to touch on to get some understanding out of this today because, like we say, in Christianity, they teach that God laws is done away with. But Christ only came to do away with one section of those laws, and that is the sacrificial law. And we're going to touch on a fruit precepts to let you know that first off, give me second Ezra chapter 9, verse 37. Because the most high laws is still in full effect today, man. Nowhere in the scriptures that you read that all his laws is done away with. You know, you won't read that through the scriptures, man. But you're here from Pastor Porkchop Mouth. You know, that's what that's where you get that from. You got that out. Yeah, the book of Second Edge of chapter nine, verse thirty-seven. Notwithstanding the law perish perished perish the so like, Start over. Huh? Notwithstanding the law perish it not. It says, notwithstanding the law perish it not. Second Edge is letting us know that guess what? The law is still in full effect. This law will not Harris, read on up. But remain it in his force. Read that again. Huh? But remain it in his force. No, they done away with. But remain it in his force. These laws, statutes, and commandments, guess what? They remain in their force, people. That means we got to keep doing these laws to this day. This is something that we have to understand because these laws help us better our lives on every facet. Man, we touch on this every single Sabbath, man. And we're going to continue to do so because that's what's going to get the get us up out of this captivity. Give me uh, Romans 7 and 1. Let's get it in the in the scriptures, in the New Testament for you, some of you brothers and sisters that don't believe in the Apocrypha. Paul is saying the same thing in Romans, man. 
the same thing. The book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Read that again. Huh? Know ye not, brethren. It says, know ye not, brethren. Paul is talking to his brethren, his kinfolk. Read on up. For I speak to them that know the law. Paul is speaking to them that know the law. And guess what? The only one that got the laws of the Most High God is the Israelites. That is the only people that have ever gotten God's commandments, laws, and statutes. So this is who Paul is addressing. Read on up. How that the law had dominion over over a man as long as he lived. Read that again, up. How the how that the law had dominion. Have over dominion. Him. The law rules over us. The laws keep us in check. Read on. Dominion over a man as long as he lived. Over a man. Guess what? That man is talking about the Israelite man, the Israelite woman, the Israelite child. As long as we live in. And bringing forth children and reproduction from generation to generation, it is our job to teach our the commandments to our uh, uh, wives and to our children, to the men also. This is very important. This is how, what keeps our nation strong. This is what keeps us above all the nations. So why would we go away from something that God told us will make us be above all the nations? You got to understand that your enemies don't want you keeping the commandments, Israel. That's why they constantly push that doctrine. The laws is done away with. The Even laws is done away with. Go ahead, huh? Even your house shot himself said, think not that I come to destroy the laws. Exactly. The he said it at his own mouth, man. Now, you know we're going to get that scripture because Christ is letting you know, don't even put it in your head that I came to, to do away with the laws or what was written of me by the prophets, man. Guess what the prophets wrote? They wrote the laws, people. So don't even put it in your head that we don't have to keep God's laws, man. That's why you got these people in all different types of religion. You got Pastor Porchop at the pool pit. Guess what? He might be sleeping with two or three women in the damn uh, church. Mm -hmm. Sister Betty don't like Sister Jones. Brother Johnson beefing with uh, 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 Brother Daniels. So it, it, you got all kind of nonsense up in there, man. If they was keeping God's laws, guess what? You won't be doing it because you would love your brother as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Guess what? We at the battle elections of the most high. We going to keep God's commandments, yes, man. Sir. That, that's that's our job. Even for when brothers, even in supposed to be Israelite camps, is banging on one another. We don't do that up here, man. We keep, thus said the Lord, man. We're going to keep these laws, man. Give me, uh, we're going to start with the sacrificial law. Because what is the, Brother Yara, what is the, uh, what is the sacrificial law? What was the sacrificial law used for? Do you know what? I would use the sacrifice. Uh, Animals are by uh huh, and that's a good point. Like we said, we always want to be specific. That's how we atone for our sins in the Old Testament. Like when a brother or a sister was in sin, you had a certain animal that you had to sacrifice for a sin. Because in the sacrificial law, we had a trespass uh, sacrifice, we had a burnt sacrifice, we had a meat sacrifice, you had a drink sacrifice, a sin sacrifice, a peace sacrifice. And all uh, and some more other types of sacrifice. We're gonna touch on this uh on the trespass sacrifice. Give me uh Leviticus 7 and 14. Uh Leviticus 6. We'll start at chapter 6. When you trespass against your brother, guess what? That that was a sin, and you could have been punishable by debt on some of that stuff, man. So this is what we're going to talk on. Like we said, the five sexual sex of laws, sacrificial law, <clears throat> the ceremonial laws, the dietary laws, the civil laws, and the moral laws. Read that up. Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, <clears throat> If a soul sin and committed a trespass against the Lord and <clears throat> lie, Unto his neighbor and do what and lie unto his neighbor. Well, guess what? When you lie to your neighbor to your brother, guess what? That is a sin. When you telling brothers that you're gonna do something, and don't come through with it. Guess what? That is a lie. That's breaking God's commandments, man. Read on, huh? In that which was delivered to him to keep to what 
that with that which was delivered him to keep uh -huh. or in fellowship or in fellowship because guess what when we in israel we're supposed to be fellowshipping amongst each other yeah we may have different doctrines or anything but guess what we all agree that we are israelites and when you're going against your brother guess what that's breaking god's commandments man you gonna be held accountable especially for brothers that's in leadership roles man brothers should know better man read on now or in thing or in thing taken away by violence. By what? By violence. Because guess what? That's where you get black on black crime. Violence taken away. Killing brothers over shoes. Killing brothers over drugs. Over money. Read on, huh? Or had deceived his neighbor. Or had did what? Deceived his neighbor. Because guess what? When you deceive your neighbor or your brother, the most high hates that thing, man. Read on, huh? Or have found that which was lost. And lied and lied concerning and do what and lied concerning read on up and swear it falsely and do what swear it falsely and swear it falsely read prayer false witness read on up in any of all these that man do it sinning therein sinning what therein that is a sin according to the most high God go to uh read verse five come down to five verse five for well, all that about which he has sworn falsely he shall even restore it in, in the principle. He shall even restore it in the principle. Read on up. And shall add a fifth part more there, on, there too. So guess what? You put a little extra on it, a fifth part. Read on up. And give it unto him to whom it'll, it'll pertain. Uh -huh. in, that, in the day of his trespass offer. In the day of his trespass offer. So when you trespass against your brother, guess what? You have to offer a trespassing uh, offering for that. To be atoned or to be forgiven of that sin. The Most High God laid down the laws. Now let's jump to a burnt offering. Read uh, verse 9. Uh, Leviticus 6 and 9. Verse 9. Commanded, command Aaron and his son, saying, mm -hmm. this is the law of the burnt offering. Mm -hmm. it, is the, it is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night until the morning. All night until the morning. And the read fire on. of the altar shall be burning in it. Uh huh. Read on. And the priest shall put on his linen garment. Shall put on his what? Linen garment. Uh huh. And his linen breeches. And his what? Linen breeches. So guess what? They wore breeches up under their garments. That that was a a a law that we had to keep too. Men in pants, women in dresses. Just because y'all see us in long garments, guess what? We are having we have pants up under that. That's right. Read on, huh? Shall be put upon his flesh mm -hmm. and take up the ashes with which the fire had consumed with the burnt offering uh -huh. on, the, uh, on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar, uh -huh. and he shall put up his garments and put up on other garments. So they would change garments because the Le the uh, Levitical priests they had to be on point with the Most High God. They couldn't slip up in nothing. They had to marry virgins. They couldn't, uh, they had to wear their hair a certain way, their beards a certain way, dress a certain way. They had to be total perfect in the most high God eyes. Read on, huh? And he should put off his garments and put off on other garments mm -hmm. and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. Uh huh. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It, it shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn the wood on, on it every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offering. Of the what? Of the peace offering. Like we touched on it, guess what? We had to offer pre peace offerings too. Uh, jump down to verse fourteen. Now we're gonna get verse fourteen. The meat offering. And this is the law of the meat offering: the sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord before the altar, mm -hmm. and he shall take of it his handful of the flour of meat offering mm -hmm. and of oil thereof and all the fragrance which is upon the meat offering mm -hmm. and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savior for a, mm -hmm. for a sweet savior uh -huh. even the memorial of it unto the Lord. Now let's go to Leviticus chapter 2 and verse 5. I want to touch on this point real quick. Going Still going into the meat offering. Read that again out. Leviticus 2 and 5. Book of Leviticus, chapter 2, verse 5. And, and if thy oblation uh -huh. be a meat offering, baking in a pan, what? Baking in a pan, read on, huh? it shall be a fine flour unleavened mingled with oil. Uh -huh. Thou shalt part it in pieces and pour oil therein. It is the meat, it is a meat offering. Now, verse 7. 
And if thy oblation be a meat often baking in the frying pan. Baking in the what? Frying pan. Read on. It should be made of fine flour with oil. Now, what race of people does these things? Fry chicken in the frying pan. Mm -hmm. This is letting you know who this is. Totally, because when we did that, that sweet savor, a sweet savor is a smell, or the smoke will go up to the most high. Let you know, guess what? Even in Proverbs, I mean, uh, Deuteronomy, those bywords in Proverbs, all black people like to eat chicken. Guess what? We reading that right here in the Hell scriptures, yeah, man. We like, <laughs> <laughs> we like that. Guess what? The most high do, too. Let's let you know that. That's, that's us in the flesh. We are these people. That's who we be, man. Let's go back to Leviticus. I had to touch on that point. like that same smell. Yeah, you do. go in the kitchen, you're like, ooh, mama got that. Over. We got that chicken fried yeah. good yeah. up in there, man. Everybody love that, that frying smell, man. But don't eat too much of it, man. <laughs> Give me a... Uh, now let's touch on the sin offering. Uh, Give me verse 17. Uh, Leviticus chapter 6, verse 17. The book of Leviticus, chapter 6, verse 17. It shall not be bacon with leaven. It have given it unto them for their portion of my offering made by fire. Mm -hmm. It is most holy. It is most holy as the sin, as is the sin offering. As is the sin offering. Read on. And as the trespass offering. Because these offering was very important in the nation of Israel because, you know, we was going through all types of stuff and all types of wickedness. So we had to cover we had a sin for everything we had to cover read on huh? all the males among the children no jump Aaron. down uh to verse 25 verse 25 speak unto Aaron and to his son saying this is the law of the sin sin offering mm -hmm. in the place where the burnt offering is killed shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord it is it is most holy uh-huh read on the priest that offered it for sin shall eat it. So during the during the time in the Old Testament when the Levitical priests was offering that, guess what? They would have to eat that too because they will be the mediators between you and the Most High God. That's what that is. Very important that they had to be in total order. Read on, I. And everything that they were doing when they made sacrifices, it was it was portions of it that was given to certain places. Uh, it might be the the Levitical priest might eat this part. The people he eats that part. Mm -hmm. Some of it was always burnt to ashes. On it all depends on what the Most High God had on those laws. Exactly. Everything had a portion and a place to be, and mm -hmm. it was always in order. Also, exactly. Good point. Huh? Go ahead. Whatsoever the shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy. Shall be what? Shall be holy. Go ahead. And when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment. Thou shalt wash there that that whereon it was sprinkled in the holy in the holy place. Uh -huh. But the the, the earthen vessel wherein it is sodden shall be broken, and if it it be sodden in a brazen brazen pot, uh -huh. it shall be both scored and rinsed in water. Now let let's jump to give me a Levit, uh, Leviticus chapter seven and verse eleven, and we're gonna touch on the peace offering. Eleven and seven and seven. I mean seven and eleven. Eleven. Eleven and seven. Uh, Leviticus seven, chapter chapter seven, verse eleven. Okay. The book of Leviticus, chapter seven, verse eleven. And this the law of the sacrifice of peace offering, which he shall offer the, unto the Lord. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cake, uh -huh. mingled with oil. Mingled with what? With oil. Uh -huh. And unleavened wafers, anointed with oil. And cakes mingled with oil of, fly, of fine flour fried. Uh -huh. Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering leavened bread with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of the peace offering. And of it shall offer one out of the whole oblation for a heave offered unto the Lord. For a what? Heave offered unto the Lord. Uh -huh. And it shall be the priest that sprinkled the blood of the peace offering. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offering for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is that it is offered. He should not leave any of it until the morning. And you, you weren't supposed to leave none of that. So the Most High God gave us the directions on how we're supposed to conduct these peace offerings and what we were supposed to do. So it was a trespass offering, a burnt offering, a meat offering, a drink offering, and a, uh, uh, did I cover that piece? 
and a sin offering. Now give me Psalms 50 and 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by a sacrifice. By what? By a sacrifice. Now, we know from the scriptures of Psalms 148, verse 14, guess what? The Israelites are the saints. We're the ones that made the sacrifice to the Most High God. Not all nations, people. Guess what? If they were amongst us, they was commanded to do that. But guess what? We were the head nation in charge of them. They were our servants and our handmaids. That did not make them equal with Israel. Because when we get to the kingdom, guess what? The other nations don't have to cleave unto us again. They're going to have to keep these commandments on the planet Earth, man, or they're going to be put to death, man. It's just that simple. That don't make them equal with us. Just like in this society, the so-called white man is ruling, but we're not equal with him in this society. It's going to be the same way in the kingdom, man. It's always a higher or a ruling class, a middle class, and a, 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 a serving class. That's just the way of life. It's just, just how it goes. Give me Exodus 24. Exodus 24 and verse 8. The book of Exodus, chapter 24, verse 8. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people uh -huh. and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant, which the Lord had made with you concerning all these words. Because the Moses was giving us the law, statutes, and commandments. So this is when we got the covenant with the blood sacrifice. Moses uh, killed a, a, a calf or a goat and sprinkled the blood on us, and that was our agreement. This is a signing on the dotted line letting us know that we're going to be God's chosen people and we are commanded to do what he say. Guess what? If we break that contract, guess what? The curses then will be kicked in. That's This is the beginning of this blood covenant that we have with the Most High God. Uh, read on up. Then went up Moses and Aaron and Nadab and uh, Abihu. Abihu and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw they saw the God of Israel, and there was under his feet it were a paved work of a sapphire stone. Now, jump down to verse 12. Uh. Verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Come unto me in the mountain, and be and be there, and I will give thee tables of stones and a law and commandments. And what? And commandments. Read on uh. which I have written. No, which uh a man has read. Which I have written. Guess what? God gave us the law, statutes, and commandments, Israel. He he wrote that on, on the stone with his finger. Read on, huh? That thou mayest teach them. That thou mayest what? That thou mayest teach them. And that is our job in the nation of Israel in leadership roles, to teach our people God's law, statutes, and commandments. That was Moses' job. That's what? That's the disciples' job. And that's going to be the 144,000 job in, in the kingdom. Very important, Israel. Give me a... Uh, now we're going to touch on the ceremonial laws. Brother Mordecai, what are the ceremonial laws? Do you know? Brother Dan, you know what the ceremonial laws is? I think the ceremonial law has something to do with the Levitical priest. Uh-uh. Anybody know what the uh, ceremonial laws is? Oh, yeah. I High holy, high holy days. Exactly. That's what the ceremonial laws are going to, how we celebrate our high holy days. Because when you have a high holy day, it's like a ceremony. You know, so that's a good point on how to remember that. Give me Leviticus chapter 23. Because in Leviticus 23, this lists all our high holy days and how to keep them. So we got the sacrificial law on how we atone for sins in the Old Testament. Now we go into the ceremonial laws, ceremonial laws on how we keep God's high holy day. Christmas is not ordained of the most high God. Guess what? Birthdays is not ordained. Easter is not ordained. Halloween is not ordained. St. Patrick's Day. I don't know why Negroes celebrate that, man. That's a damn Irish custom, man. <laughs> no, it ain't make no sense. Fourth of July is not one of God's high holy days. He gave us high holy days to follow and how to keep them. Like we got a lot of them coming up this month. We got the Feast of uh, Memorial Blowing of Trumpets. We got the Day of Atonement. 
We got the Feast of Tabernacles, and that's what Leviticus chapter 23 goes over. Speak. Go ahead, Ark, verse 1. The book of Leviticus chapter 23, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. No, speak unto everybody. Speak unto the children of Israel. Like we say, when we came out of the land of Egypt, it was a mixed multitude with us, but God always made a difference. He told Moses to speak unto the unto the children of Israel, not the mixed multitude. So it's the difference. Read on up. And say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. To be what? Holy convocations. Now these are holy convocations. A convocation is a holy gathering. These are the days that we're commanded to gather on. Read on up. Even these are my feasts. Six days shall work be done. Six days shall work be done. Read on. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. That was the first high holy day that was instituted. Is the Sabbath day. Guess what? We're worshiping this day today on the correct day. Read on. Huh? And holy convocation. That's why we're gathering together. It is a holy gathering. Read on. You should do no work therein. So we, we're commanded not to do any work. Read on. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. Uh-huh. Read on. Huh? These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Read on. Huh? Verse 5. In the 14th day of the first month, at eve is the Lord's Passover. Is the what? Is the Lord's Passover. So we have the Passover, which is one of the first high, where the second high holy days, where the first one of the uh, of the year. Because guess what? The year does not begin in January, people. The year begins at the end of uh, uh, March, early April, when everything is starting to spring back up. Esau knows these things, but he knows that our people don't know these things. So he play on our ignorance. But the most high God, once you get this understanding, you come back and understand everything. Read on up. And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we have the Feast of Unleavened Bread, too. Read on. Unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. So we're commanded to eat unleavened bread seven days, like we're gonna do when the Passover come around. Read on up. And the first day you should have a holy convocation. So the first day of the Passover is a holy convocation, a holy gathering. So we should be together on that first day. Read on up. You should do no servile work therein. So we should be working on that day if we can. But we know that we in captivity. So guess what? We do the best that we can. Read on up. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. Now, during this time, we were sacrificing. But guess what? We don't sacrifice anymore. So it's just we're coming to enjoy each other's company. Eat, have a good time, and just enjoy ourselves. Give me a... Uh, Give me verse 15. Verse 15. And you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from the day that ye brought the sheep of the wave offering. Uh -huh. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Uh huh. Read verse 16. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, shall ye number 50, 50 days. Shall we number 50 days? Read on. Huh? And ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. Because this is going into the year of the Jubilees. Read on. Huh? You shall bring out of your habitation two wave, wave loads of two tent bills. They shall be a, a fine flour. Uh -huh. They shall be baking with heat with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. Unto the who? Unto the Lord. Now let's drop down to verse 23. We're just verse touching on a few of them. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children, children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of in the, the seventh month, what? In the seventh month. Who knows what the seventh month is? Maccabees did a class of it a, a few weeks ago. What's the seventh month? The real seventh month. Luke. Oh. Luke. Well, according to uh I guess he's the Roman Greco, I'll give it to you that way. What is the seven day? You know what? What is the seventh? Say it again. No, according to the Roman Greco, you know, like uh, January. What's the seventh month? What is supposed to be the seventh month? Um, yeah, July. You got to count, count it out. How do we know? What is it? It is, but what month is it according to the Roman Ge Greco calendar? Uh, 
It's September. Yeah, what is it? Sep. Exactly. Uh, if you go back, like the Deca, the uh, December. Hold up. What does Deca mean? Ten. What does Nov mean? November. Nine. Okay. See, that's how you know. That's how Esau leaves those hidden clues. That's crap. It's very crap. Our people don't understand that. <laughs> Y'all understand that? So now we know that the seventh month is September, really. Yeah. So October is what month? Hey. Uh, exactly, October. You know, so we got to understand that that's how you really know what month that we really are in. They leave those clues for us, but they play on our ignorance. Yeah, because even at the time of the, in the Greeks, they even labeled them uh, after our calendar, after uh -huh. our months, which was September was actually labeled at the time, the seventh month. Yeah. Just like it was. Then when they started manipulating it, they started changing. Like I said, that was coming from different uh Different, activities. different kings that was coming up mm -hmm. also was changing all kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, a Roma king would come out one day and uh, he'd probably go uh, look at the calendar. He got 30 days in his month, the last king. Mm -hmm. He wants to outdo that king. Yeah. So on his birth month, I'm going to take this. That's why February is shorter days. I'm going to take this day over here and put it over there. Mm -hmm. They would do all that type of stuff. But like we say, the most time is all about order. It's 12 months. Each one of them has 30 days. That's that's how it is. Three, what, 360, not 365, how Esau puts it. You know, so that's something we got to learn to come back to. Read that verse 23 again. Huh? Verse 23, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, in the first day of the month. So the seventh month, on the first day of the month, read on. So you have a Sabbath, uh -huh. a memorial of blowing of trumpets. So on the first day of the seventh month, guess what? We have a memorial blowing of trumpets. That's what we have it to celebrate next week. Read on up. And holy convocation. So that's a holy gathering. So we should be gathering on that day. And that's what we're going to do. Read on up. You should do no survival work, survival work therein, but you should offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh -huh. Verse 27. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also in the tenth day of this month. So the tenth day of the same seventh month. Read on. There should be a day of atonement. A day of atonement. What's the day of atonement? Brother Dan, you should know this or not. What's the day of atonement? What is it? Yeah. It's a, it's a day of atonement for all your sins for a whole year. Exactly. So what do we do on the day of atonement? We fast. we fast, exactly. So that should be a group fasting on that day. Quick question: Has everybody here been fasting at least once this year? Everybody been fast? Because it's because it's, it's, it's to people that ain't never fast. This day gonna seem it's, like forty eight hours, man. <laughs> it's terrible. But the thing is, it's 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 atonement for all all the sins, man, and all the burdens that you have. We're gonna go into a class on that day of atonement. Too. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. But uh, that, that's a big, big part of our, our, our culture, who we are, is the day of atonement, man. Because y'all gotta understand, you're atonement for everything. You got to forgive people. All of that goes yeah. into the day of atonement. So that's a big day. Yeah. Read verse 27 again. Start over. Also, on the 10th day of this seventh month, there should be a that should be a day of atonement. Uh -huh. It should be a holy convocation unto you. Guess what? That's a holy convocation too. Read on, huh? And you shall afflict your souls. So we shall afflict our souls fasted as a nation of people, as a congregation. Because when we fasted all together on one accord, guess what? The Most High regards that in high regard, man. He loved that thing, man. You know, to right. see us all together on one accord. Read on. An offer, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh-huh. And you should do no work in that day, in that same day. So we shall be working on that day, the read on. For it is the day of atonement, to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. So jump down to verse 34. Verse 34. Speak unto the children of Israel. The 15th day of the seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles. Shall be the what? Feast of Tabernacles. So guess what? We also got the Feast of Tabernacles in this same month, read on. For seven days unto the Lord. Well, now we're supposed to be out there camping for seven days, but like we say, captivity. And that's what we tell brothers and sisters. The more and more we rehearse these righteous acts, the better and better we get at it. Try to uh, set your vacation days up according to God's high holy days. So that way each year we can do more and more days. Because one year uh, we will want to go out there for a full whole week. That's right. You know, we, we practice on these things. Read on, huh? Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Uh -huh. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. 
and ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It is the solemn assembly. It is a what? Solemn assembly. So the Feast of Tabernacles is when we learn to dwell in boots, uh, what the uh, Native American Indians call teepees, or what we call today tents. A lot of times the Gad retains some of those traditions that they did. That's where they get staying in the teepee from, because we did that when we came out of the land of Egypt for 40 years, because the Most High was killing their behinds because they didn't want to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. He was killing a lot of those old generations. So that's where we get that custom from to uh, keep that in a memorial. Let's get to uh, now. Let's go to the dietary laws. Anybody know what the diet? Yeah, what is the dietary laws? Mm. Exactly. What well, we can and cannot eat. Uh, you know, because we don't want to just be eating anything. Like Christians say, God created the pig. What Negro, he created the roach too, so you're going to eat a roach? You know, that just don't even make no sense. God gave us creatures that we can eat and that we cannot eat. You know, that's why we play with heart disease. You know, eat raw meat, trying to be like Esau, uh, minim, uh, medium medium rare. Man, that's, that's an abomination. Most I said, don't eat blood, man. You know, those things affect our bodies differently than it affects Esau. You know, they come from the Caucasus Mountain, man. We are plain men dwelling in tents, man. So our bodies can't eat that type of stuff, man. Mm -hmm. Most High God gave us things far good, man. So we wouldn't have diabetes. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have gout and all these things. Give me Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And also, Go man, ahead, just, uh, and just think about this, man. He's going to keep on, he's going to keep on punching our people until they figure out, guess what, man? This is not good for me. Man. Exactly. <laughs> It don't even really affect other nations like it do out. No, it don't, man. It really don't. Matter of fact, we get that in Deuteronomy. Where is that at? <clears throat> the book of Deuteronomy, uh, that curse. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 61, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 61. Let's read that, man. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, and verse 61. Also, every sickness... In every plague, read that again. I also, every sickness, diabetes, also, every sickness, yeah, also, every sickness, high blood pressure, also, every sickness. When you check the, the categories on these things, guess what? Negroes and Hispanics lead in all of these categories, man. You think that's 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 not a coincidence, man? It's because we break God's commandments, eating catfish, eating pork, eating shrimp, crabs, lobster, all these things that Esau do. They told a lot of people that these things are delicate. Most High God said that's an abomination unto your body. Read on, huh? In every play, which is not written in the book of this law. Because guess what? These plays ain't written in the book of this, uh, this law. Diabetes. They, diabetes wasn't even thought about until probably 50 years ago, man. A lot of these things was not thought about until we started dealing heavily into breaking God's commandments. You know, so he jacking us up, man. He have to afflict us to get us to wake up like uh, Brother Jeroboam has said. Read on up. Then will the Lord bring un upon thee until thou be destroyed. Until thou be what? Until thou be destroyed. Like Big Mama laying up in that bed with her leg cut off. Until thou be destroyed. Until thou be destroyed, man. It's, hey, I'm pretty sure we uh we are uh, high numbing amputees, too. Yeah. You know, it, it's yeah. very important that you control your health, people. That, that that is very important in the nation of Israel. The Most High God said, "Don't never eat to get full. Just eat to be sufficient right. to keep you energy to just keep you going." Israel, you know, He gives us etiquette, and we'll touch on that too before the uh, memorial blowing the trumpets. A lot of that etiquette is in uh, the apocrypha on how we should be, That's right. how we should eat. You know, bringing stuff. You know, you don't want to be just coming to the party and not bringing nothing. All the other nations get everything from our scriptures. And I do mean everything, man. You know, there's nothing that they have not stolen from us. Give me uh, Leviticus 11 and 7. We'll start at verse 2. The book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 2. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, These are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. So God, he created all animals. So he know what's good for your body. So guess what? He know what is not good for your body. So the most high God is laying this down. What we should eat. Read on up. And that's also the ones that's calling himself vegetarian. I'm telling the man, oh, you can't eat meat. God gave 
Uh, exactly. We can't eat meat. We now, can't eat meat. There's no problem with you eating it, not eating meat, but there's no problem with them eating meat. Exactly. They're eating the right clean meat. And like I said, that meat law was instituted when Noah got off the ark, when he got on. That's why he was taking seven of every good animal. Because guess right. what? If he didn't, he would have been looking at them chickens like, man, them chickens looking kind of good. And that would have been the only two chickens on the boat, man. That's right. That's so the right. most I had him bring in seven of every clean animal, man. So it's okay to eat meat like Brother McAbee said. Go ahead, huh? Whatsoever part the hoof and his clothing put it. Read that again, huh? Whatsoever part the hoof. Part in the hoof is when that hoof is divided, like exactly like, like a pig, like cattle. You know, they hooves are parted. Like Dr. Spark. <laughs> Give me y'all an example, because our people like examples. <laughs> they do, man. Go ahead, huh? What you got? Question. Like the Christians, they say, as far as like with pork and all that, they say, well, if you be uh, scriptures in the New Testament, say, well, if you be sanctified. Yeah, exactly. What guess what? Mean? And we're going to touch on that, because guess what? That is a good point. Matter of fact, we can jump down to that. Uh, what is that? Genesis. If it be sanctified. Because guess what? That sanctified is going into, matter of fact, let's jump to it, right? So give me Leviticus 11 and verse 47. Mm -hmm. Leviticus 11 and verse 47. There's another one in Deuteronomy, I mean in Genesis that I want though. The book of Leviticus chapter 11, verse 47. Uh -huh. To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. To make a what? A, the unclean and the clean. Uh -huh. And between the beast that may be eaten and the beast that may not be eaten. Read that from the top again. Huh? To make a difference between the unclean and the clean. And between the beast that may be eaten and, and the beast that may not be So eaten. guess what? When the Most High was creating the creatures, he sanctified creatures that could be eaten and creatures that could not be eaten. Uh, go to Genesis chapter 1 and verse uh, 21. And a lot of times we can't go by what the Christianity world is saying anyway. They just don't do everything, they don't do it according to the Bible, simple plain as that. Uh huh. But I, I, that's a good question though, because I'll be one of we need to constantly touch on those because they get that from uh, 1 Timothy mm -hmm. 4 and 4. Hold on, let me bring this one out real quick. Read this out. The book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 21. Uh -huh. And God created great well, uh huh, and every living creature that moved, which the waters brought forth abundantly uh -huh. after their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind, uh -huh. and God saw it that it was good. Read that again, Ark. And, and God, what? And God saw that it was good. God saw that those animals were good for the purpose that he made them. That's what that's going into. So he made whales, guess what? To swim the oceans of the floor. He made cattle to be eaten. He made pigs. What is why did God create the pig? Why a little bit of not? Exactly. That's good. He created the pig to be the garbage disposal of the earth. So if you throw a dead body out there to a pig, guess what? A pig would eat that, man. We can't be putting that junk in our body. Guess what? That's breaking God's laws to be accountable, man. What other question did you have? Huh? Wait a minute, let me read this. Verse 25. In verse 25, and God made the beast of the earth after the, after his kind, uh -huh. and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeped upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that, and God saw that. It was good. God saw that it was good for their purpose that he made. So when Christians, because I knew they love to pull first Timothy's four and four, you know, anything God is going to be. God made these things to be eaten with Thanksgiving for their purpose. That's the whole thing. We can get that too real quick. What you got? I'll go ahead. Uh, another one. I think they say go call it. I made it clean or something. Yeah. Like that. And that's that's going. That's not that don't have nothing to do with eating meat. That was a vision that, uh, and we'll touch on that after class. That was a vision that most high was given, uh, Cornelius. That has nothing to do with eating pork at all. That is a similar to that they still hadn't figured out yet because they don't keep God's commandments. Right. Give me, uh, first Timothy is four and four. Our people can go through this Bible and make up any reason they want to eat pork if they want to. Exactly. But like we say, God created them. All animals have a purpose on the planet. They all have a purpose. Read that up. The book of First Timothy, chapter four and verse four. For every creature of God is good. Oh, big mama say pork. Read that again. For every creature 
of God is good. Them pork chop sandwiches. For every creature of God is good. Them catfish baskets. For every creature of God is good. Read on, huh? And nothing to be refused. So they closed the Bible on that. Nothing to be refused. So we don't refuse that pork chop sandwich. Like I said, God created roaches, so don't refuse to eat a roach either then. Read on, huh? Roach, roach, roach. Uh, 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 roach basket. Read on, huh? <laughs> if it be received with Thanksgiving. So they closed the Bible on that, but that has nothing to do with eating pork. You know, that that because they already knew, Timothy and Paul already knew God's law. That's why we always say, keep the laws. Because if you keep it God's laws, you won't even put eating pork in your head. Because right. he had already ordained that from the beginning, Genesis. Right. He already ordained that. And, every, my, yeah, and everything that, that, that the Most High made good, it, everything he made is good. Everything, right. exactly. Even the pig. Yeah. It's good. It's good for what it's made to create it exactly. for. Exactly. To be a garbage disposal. Right. It's good for the catfish, what, it, what that catfish does. It cleans off the bottom of rivers and lakes. Exactly. And if and the same thing, crabs and lobsters, yeah. they clean off the bottoms of oceans mm -hmm. and seas. Clams. And all, all that. Things. That's what they, they made for it. Yeah. Clean off the bottom. If you notice, if you look at the ocean right now, exactly. it's getting worse. Exactly. Fish right. are dying. Why? Because well, we consume what cleans the ocean. Exactly. We consume the shrimp. We consume consume the lobster. We consume consume the crab. Yeah. We consume what the, every restaurant. They don't have crappie restaurants. They got what restaurant? Red Catfish. <laughs> Catfish restaurant. Uh, so our lakes are no good. That's why you got these parasites now. Now when you get out the lake, you got to go take your boat to the washroom. To the car wash to wash the boat out because of the parasites. Why? Because what we what cleaned those out, we consume the majority of. Them. Mm -hmm. So it's breaking our lakes worse, our oceans are worse, everything else. Our rivers are even bad because we eat what we're not supposed to be eating. Exactly. That, like I said, they good for what they do. Uh, for what God but if you start them. eating what, what, something that we're not supposed to eat. And therefore, you taking the imbalance of the world and change it to something else. Why so the world is really going out of line. Right? Why you take those whales be beaching themselves? Exactly. Man, they can't stand to be in that water, man. That water is dirty and nasty, man. Mm -hmm. Because we keep taking the stuff that cleans it. Exactly. That's what we, you know what I mean? So we uh, beach it on. We and to even take another point where there any such thing as a water treatment plant back in old old days. Mm -hmm. The water treatment plant was the animals that God made them to do. He made them to clean the seas and the rivers. You know, because river is drinking water. Guess what? We can't even drink out of the river no more, man. Right. You know, that's why they have to send it through that water treatment uh, plant and stuff. And you got to understand Esau is very crafty. You don't see catfish places in, in Highland Park. Mm -hmm. You know, they eating good fish. You know what I'm saying? They only have that in our neighborhoods because they know if they keep us breaking God laws that they can continue to rule over us, man. You know, I used to eat catfish, you know, but guess what? Crappie is even better. Mm -hmm. Perch is even better. Mm -hmm. Red strop ba bass is even better. Mm -hmm. You know, these things are good for you. You know, right. fish is good for you. You just got to eat the right kind. Let's go back to Leviticus 11 and 2. Leviticus 11 and 2. Uh -huh. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are upon the earth. Uh -huh. Whatsoever part of the hoof and its cloven footed that and cheweth the cud among the beasts that shall ye eat. What is chewing the cud? Does any, anybody know? You know, what's uh, chewing the cud? Uh, they don't, they don't regurgitate their food. Yeah, exactly. They regurgitate like yeah, a I mean, cow. A cow has four stomachs. So it eats, regurgitate, eats again, mm -hmm. regurgitate, eats again to get all those nutrients out. Mm -hmm. So you can just be a clean beast to eat. You know, that's what chewing the cud is. A pig don't chew the cud. Yeah. You know, it is cloven footed, but it don't chew the cud. Guess what? A pig don't even have sweat glands. Exactly. You know, you know so we why, putting why all this you, stuff in our body. That's why you sweat so hard when you eat. <laughs> Say it again. Uh. That's why you sweat so hard when you eat. <laughs> and guess what? That's what causes high blood pressure, man. High blood pressure comes from salt. When you sweating, you sweating out all your salt, man. Right. So they retain all the salt, man. So that's that's not good for you. And see, when you eat, when you eat swine and you eat those crab, different stuff like that, like our bodies made like the earth, man. We got minerals and different stuff in our body. It's like when it, when that different foods hit our body, our body like danger, 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 uh -huh. danger. It's it's telling you no, this is not good. But our people like man to the taste. Oh my god, this is wonderful. Mm -hmm. But our body's like, no, it's just not wonderful, man. This is gonna kill you. 
Yeah. Exactly like I said, everything that tastes good ain't good for you. That's right. right. You know, yeah. there's so many people gonna be two thirds, hmm. and of the two thirds, two thirds of them gonna be two thirds just because they don't want to give up bacon. Yeah, mm -hmm. I hear them all the time. I can't give up bacon. Bacon. That's a man. You mean to tell me you'll give up your whole salvation and immortality for some bacon? A lot of people gonna be. Hop into the pit of hell. Cause uh, they're gonna be amputated and <laughs> all type of things by the time they get there. No fingers, no toes, nothing, man. I mean, this was, let's see what the Bible said about this. Get Isaiah 66 and 17. Man. Exactly, man. That explain. Because guess what? Even those, even those uh, uh uh what you call it, Moabs, they feed not people them rats. Yeah. Uh, Going to them Chinese restaurants. Y'all get about the Chinese restaurants. <laughs> so when you break God's commandments, guess what? He also brings judgments for each commandment that you break. Read on up. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66. I got it. Verse 15. Verse 17. Verse 17. Mm -hmm. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh. Okay. And the abomination and the mouse. And the mouse, because they, they, y'all eat the mouse too. You go to the Chinese restaurant. Read this. Shall be consumed together. Uh, what they gonna be? Shall be consumed together. All of all of this gonna be consumed together, man. Read on. <clears throat> say it the Lord. Say it the Lord. <laughs> like we say, y'all watch out for them boneless chicken wings, man. <laughs> <laughs> it could be some rat meat, man. Y'all hey, don't eat nothing without no bones, man. <laughs> you know, let's go back to Leviticus, man. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. <laughs> like, you like to eat the bowl as we I'm going to die that I would say, oh man, I don't eat no chicken on the bone. And I'll be like, what, what you mean? Oh, because this guy, get, at least I know it's a chicken. Uh, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that we ain't bent up. I know that's a chicken, but uh, all that other stuff, man, you don't know what you mean. Well, yeah, they had uh, KLC, they had the whole boneless bread. bread. Man. Oh, yeah. I say, what in the hell is going on? Yeah, man. It, it Process me putting it together. That's a lot of have. Quit eating processed food because that's exactly what they're doing. They're processing it. they making it, putting what they want on they it. They're gluing it together. Yeah. Yeah. Take, take your fried chicken off and just put KFC. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's true. Uh, man, that is the nasty. I don't know if y'all ever seen that. What? Uh, what, they, what they do, KFC, the reason they got it to KFC, they can't call it chicken because. They genetically make their chicken, uh -huh. and uh, if you look at the chicken that they genetically make, so they made it the way they don't got to pluck the feathers off. Of it. Mm -hmm. So they make a chicken that's just bald headed chicken. They don't even grow feathers. <laughs> that's why when you see that little drumstick, it always be broke up because it's soft meat that the bones don't even develop right no more. Mm -hmm. That's why they, I, man, I don't, that, man, I ain't even have KFC in the body. Now, 15 years. Like we say, Guess what? That's also a curse, too, because it tells us we don't eat the foul food mm -hmm. in the land of our enemies. So a lot of this food, guess what, is the foul. Yeah, it's all of it. All yeah. of it is. So guess what? Pray over your food. Yes. Yeah. That's why I say pray over your food. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and that's why. Because of what it said about the cakes. Yeah, dumb cakes. Yeah. Yeah, do them cakes. So when y'all yeah. up there eating them ding dongs and, 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 and cupcakes and all that, y'all. The Bible said they made with dumb. Mm. You know, read verse four. Uh, but we had to get to another one. Uh, uh, <laughs> Where we at? Leviticus eleven and four. Eleven so verse four. Oh yeah, that's great. Yeah, some of them got them on top of your refrigerator right now. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Uh. The book of Leviticus, chapter eleven, verse four. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud, uh -huh. or of them that divide the hook. As the camel. As the who? As the camel. Look, guess what? A camel divided the hood, but we cannot eat the camel. Read on. Because he chewed the cud, but divided not the hood. Oh, divide. He don't, he divide, don't divide, divide it. Yeah, he don't divide, but he chewed the cud. Read on. He is unclean to you. Uh-huh. And the, the coney, because uh -huh. he chewed the cud, but divided not the hood. Uh-huh. He is unclean to you. Uh-huh. Verse six. And the hare. The rabbit. Read because on. he chewed the cud. But divided not the hood. He is unclean. So too. All you brothers, country brothers out there eating that rabbit stew. Taste you know? like chicken. <laughs> we gotta stop that. We cannot eat that. Now get to our point, verse seven. Verse seven. 
and the swine, and though, the he, de- read though he divided the hoof, uh-huh. and he be clover footed, yet he chew it not the cud, but he is unclean to you. The pig is unclean to us people, so we have to abstain from that. Guess what? Like I said, the Bible tells us that it's two or three witnesses in the book. It's also dietary laws in the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 14. So you can also find it there too. Let's flip there. And another thing, you remember back when uh, Jack in the Box, remember uh, the old Jack in the Box before when they used to have him coming after Jack in the Box, the restaurant. Remember they blew that up, Jack up, and they came back later with that? Well, that was, what happened was they had got caught uh, selling horse meat. They was, they was changing the beef to horse meat. Horse meat is an unclean meat because, you know, even though the horse made you at the cut, it's, it's, it's not clothing for you. And they was giving you Taking away unclean meat and, and serving you, I mean, taking you away clean, clean meat uh, and serving you unclean meat. That yeah. was back at that time. That's when y'all had the rebirth of Jack when he came back down, which y'all see now, him walking around with the thing. That wasn't like that back in the day. That's the new Jack when they came back and brought the beef back, you know, because it. And let me make this point too, man. I know I'm, that's why I'm looking around and I'm looking at the people here. I'm like, damn, man, we ain't going on KFC no more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. man. It's, it's 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 good to look up the things that you eat, man, mm-hmm. because it's really you know everything that we do, man. It counts for something, man. Mm-hmm. You cannot just think that you're being a truth and not take account to what you do in your day to day basis, man. You got to make sure that you own because guess what? When you asking the Most High God for favors, if you asking Him to do things, to move things in your life, and to things to come in your life, you got to make sure that you on point with everything you do, like I. Check, 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 check. Get a checklist of things that you're supposed to do, man, and make sure you're doing those things. And your and the way that you eat, that's just a part of it. Go ahead, huh? Give me uh Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 9. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 9. These are the, ye, these ye shall eat of all that are in the water. So God has given us the animals we can eat in the waters. Read on. All that have fins and scales shall ye eat. All that have fins and scales we can eat. So guess what? Catfish what has fins but no scales. Mm-hmm. You know, so that is unclean to us. Crabs, lobster, all those are crustaceans. They're made to clean the to eat the doodle of the sea. So those things are unclean to us. Snails, uh, oysters, all those different types of things, you know, that Esau pushes on us. You know, and, and one more fish that people kind of tend to ignore. What is that? Trout. Mm-hmm. Y'all know that? Mm-hmm. Trout don't have scales. It's a smooth, it's a smooth, pretty fish, but it has no scales. Mm-hmm. Uh, you get those out of rivers in Colorado. They all, that's what they do, trout fishing. Mm. So be careful when you're eating trout because that's an unclean fish. Now, not because I said it, because the most I said it. Exactly. Don't have Read verse 10. Verse 10. And whatsoever had not fins and scales ye may not eat, it is unclean unto you. It is unclean to us. Verse 11. Of all clean birds ye shall eat. So these he giving us the birds that we can eat. Read on. But these are they of which you should not eat uh-huh. the eagle. So we shouldn't eat the eagle. Read on. And the uh, and the uh, ossifer, ossifer, uh-huh. ossifrage, and the osprey, uh-huh. and the glee, and the kites, and the vulture after his kind. So these are all birds of prey. Mm-hmm. You know, birds that eat other birds and other meat. Read on up. And in and every raven after his kind. So we shouldn't eat the raven. Read on. And the and the owl and the night hawk and the cuckoo the uh-huh. cuckoo and the hawk after his kind more birds of prey read on the little owl and the great owl and the swan uh-huh. and the pelican and their gear and their gear eagle and the, the cormorant uh-huh. read on and the stork and the heron and the heron uh, after hurricane I know I just <laughs> uh, I saw that in the story the other day. Just I was about to buy some. For real? Yes, I just saw that. Boy, you saw here. Yeah. And the law and left wing and the bat. Heron is the little one fish, right? The, the who? The, it's the, a bird. Oh, I'm yeah. tripping. No, I'm on my oh, mind. you thought? Yeah, I was about to I say that. On no, my mind somewhere. I wasn't about to buy no bird. You know that? <laughs> 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 Three verse nineteen. Uh, 
<laughs> and every creeping thing that flies is unclean unto you. Mm -hmm. They should not be eaten. They should not be what? Not be eaten. So these are all the things or the animals that we can and cannot eat. So it's like we say, it's the sacrificial law. It's the ceremonial laws, the dietary laws. Now we're going to touch on the silver laws. And that's another thing they, I've seen on Facebook. Chicken is a... I, and that's what I would... I'm glad you said that, man. People, it's okay to eat chicken. Yes, it is not a bird of play. Just because they every now and then run out and kill something that's in the back, it's not a bird of prey. You put a chicken out there, they're, they're going to be pecking on the ground trying to find whatever they were or something. Yeah, they're yeah. not going to be running around there, got a plan, sneaking up on them. Okay, I'm going to sneak up on the rat. And they don't, it's not what they yeah, do. Chicken is okay. And, and also, let me make this point too before we get off the diet here. Uh, if you run over a clean animal, you can't eat that either. Man. No. Yeah, you can't. <laughs> You don't supposed to eat that because some of our people, man, they think this. Strap to the car. Roll kid. <laughs> yeah. You cannot eat that. What you got? No, I think duck is okay. Nah, okay. Uh, no, no, no. We just see it in there. A lot of times we don't no, see it in there. Family, I looked at. We'll we'll look that up for sure. I, I had that before. Uh, I think it's under one of these families of duck. Uh, in fact, uh, under the swan, when you looked that up. Okay. That's why I kind of stopped eating duck. That's why if you ever ate duck before, it's a greasy. Yeah. It's a dark greasy meat. Uh, not as see, but the thing is, a lot of people, when they, just like, you know, in, you know like Arkansas, where we're from, where we grew up in, they don't eat the whole duck. They just breast the duck out, eat the duck breast. And that's like a red meat type of meat that, that, that they eat. But, you know, me personally, I never ate a whole duck, but I didn't eat the breast. You know what I mean? But... I mean, like I said, we can still go look that up. Yeah, we don't look it up, you know, because I know some of our people do eat that. So, yeah, we'll look that up and have that information for y'all. Go to, uh, now, like we said, we're going to touch on the silver laws. Anybody know what the silver laws is? What is the silver laws? You know, Brother Justin? Go ahead. Yeah, do, do like the magistrates. What <laughs> Yeah. Make it simplify for us. You know we are Negroes and Hispanics, man. Exactly. Restitution. Uh, so if you got a problem, like you said, with suing brothers, you done stole some because that's what restitution is. If you get caught, you have to repay that stuff back, man. That's what you get uh, caught in Esau's kingdom. You got to pay court costs, uh, lawyer fees. Probation fees, that's a part of your restitution or restoring you back to uh, being a, a, a law-abiding citizen. So give me Deuteronomy chapter, uh, I mean Exodus chapter 21. That's how we conduct justice amongst each other, in other words. When it's, yeah, exactly. Uh, being civil towards one another. When we uh same things you do like when you go to civil laws, like when you're out there in public when you, and you're amongst your people out there, those are civil laws. When you're doing something that you know, if you go wrong, you be in court, having to go to court for those. Those are civil laws. That's why they get civil court. Uh, uh give me Exodus chapter twenty one verse eighteen. We'll just touch on a little bit. The book of Exodus chapter twenty one verse eighteen. And a man strived together and one smite another with a stone over his fist, and he died not, but keepeth his bed. If he rise again and walk abroad upon this staff, then shall he that smite him be quiet. Be quick. Be, be quick. Uh -huh. Read that again, I. So do y'all to bring it up to today? What is this going into? What is this today? An uh, assault case. <laughs> That's what this is today. Read that from the top again, verse eighteen. Uh, uh if if he rise again, verse eighteen. First, and Start if men strive together, together and one smite another with yeah, his own. If men strive together, like you got two of your homeboys, you know. Read on, huh? And smite and one and one smite another with a stone. And you hit your brother with a with a rock or something. Read on, huh? And it and with his feet. Oh, or with his fist. I mean, I'm sorry to like. You. And with his <laughs> with his fist, and he died not. You know, he just got a little knot on his head. You ain't kill a brother, but you done probably he's knocked him out. He's saying he died not, but he keeping his bed. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> he got knocked out. <laughs> Basically, like, he <laughs> won't <laughs> Read on, huh? If he rise again and walk abroad upon his staff, then he shall that smite him 
Be quiet. Be quick. The, the one that smote him, be quick. Read on up. I gotta look that way. <laughs> only, only he shall pay for the loss of his time. Read that again. Up. Only he shall pay for the loss of his time. Because when you get an assault case, guess what? You have to pay out money. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people will sue you for that. And you get held uh, responsible for that. Read on up. And should cause him to be thoroughly healed. And you guess what? You're gonna pay for his medical bills his medical too. Medical bills and his time from work. <laughs> and he missed at the job. <laughs> this is what they're saying. This exactly. is where, this is where they got that from. Exactly. This is what man. we were doing back then. Hey, man, you gotta pay for. You know, hey, I'm hurt. I can't go to work today. I can't go out in the field today to get my cattle. You gonna pay for that? Yeah. Guess what? Guess what? That also stopped black on black crime. Yeah. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, Cause guess what? When you got the when they, you get the hit in their pockets, guess what? You like, hey man. Hey. Especially, <laughs> especially when you see the government. See, they made they, they got it bad because you got to pay you pay the government back a lot of the money. But see, when you got to pay against that dude that you was pissed off, that will stop you from doing. You're like, man, I gotta pay him. Yeah. What? And then he gonna be hurt. Then you be sitting up there all day. Man, man, get out the bed, man. God, let me go to work. So I can finish man, man. You, no, but, but Guess what? Man. Guess what? I, exactly. <laughs> now, when it's that next time you fight, guess what you gonna do? You gonna be like, you gonna walk off now because you remember, man. I had to pay for Donnell and everything, man. You know, Donnell was been two weeks. I had to watch that. No, -uh. so now you change. This is what we had these laws for. Exactly, man. Like we say, and even when we say, like, that's where they got the word judicial system mm -hmm. from, the system of Judah. They read in the book of our laws and mm -hmm. took that name. See, all the nations have taken everything from us, man. Y'all can even imagine even the sign that on the hospital sign with the two snakes. Where do you think they got that from? They got that right. from Moses mm -hmm. when he raised up the state. Yeah. That's, that staff means healing. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. It's nothing wicked. But uh, another brother I talked to, he made a good point. He did say Moses had one snake on the stab, yeah, right. and you know Esau got two. <laughs> so it's something we have to watch. Well, I, you know I, mean, they I, mean, I can tell you another place they got that from also. Uh, if you look at the historical events of how uh, ISIS and Osiris, yeah, Osiris uh, and Osiris, yeah. But uh, we're getting that's another, that's another, yeah, that's religion, a whole, another whole story. Why they came about, and I, I bring that out to anybody want to know later on. But give me Exodus chapter twenty-two and verse one. Because it was a uh, very important how how we conducted justice amongst each other, you know, treating each, uh, each other uh, equally. Read on up. The book of uh, Exodus, chapter twenty-two, verse one: If a man shall steal an ox or a sheep and kill it or sell it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for. Boy, so you got man, wicked see. Negroes out there stealing from your brother. The most I gonna make it hurt. He gonna hit you in the pockets too. You steal a, a ox. Guess what? You have to pay back five oh, oxen for oh, one see. ox. That yeah, stop black on black crime, man. Stop, man. See these these laws hit you where it hurts, man. Yeah, it stop it. Hey, guess what? You know you can't steal. You know you can't hurt nobody. Guess what? Hey, man. You, guess what? Guess what you gonna do? Finally, do get in your mind. I'm gonna get along with my brother. Man. So I'm gonna get along with my sister. Yeah, and then, and if you don't got none, that's say you done stole this man out, and you only you don't got none. But guess what? Every you got five times. Every time you get one, it go to that man. You go get you another one, it goes to that man. You got to do this five times. Then you can start your little old yeah. Let me go and make some money. But he's gonna give all your money to him for just quit stealing. Exactly. That's what this is saying. Quit stealing. This, and and it's a different story. It's just a a nice way of taking care of business. That's exactly what it is. Like we say, you do the crime, you got to pay the time, man. <laughs> but as simple as that, man. Right. So these are the laws regarding civil laws on how we conduct justice amongst each other. Now, the last section of laws that we're going to touch on is, guess what? The moral laws. Does anybody know what that is going into? Just even thinking about the word, what is the definition of the word moral? Kind of, sort of. Look that up for me right quick. Moral. Moral. Oh, you got the phone on. Let's get a <laughs> having a hard time getting it out of uh. James, man. Hey, uh. James Brown in the world, James. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Let's get that definition. Like we say. What you say, uh? What you say, y'all? I just say how you how you like carry yourself. Yeah, it's going into your character. 
But is it meant? What you got? Just an example for moral law. If I if I lend to a brother and I don't, I don't uh, if I lend to somebody and uh, when they go to pay me back, I don't I don't charge them uh, extra. That's a moral law, right? Uh, now that was going into like uh, uh, really the civil laws. Really, that that one is. But, dress code. Yeah, it is. It, it's touching on stuff like that. But let's read the definition. Uh, definition That's a part of, of it, though. Drive. The definition of moral uh, uh, morals: a person's standard of behavior or belief concerning what is and is not acceptable for them to do. Mm -hmm. I like. Let me read this one. Concerned with the pr the principles of right and wrong. Yeah. So morals is a hey, learning what's right and what's wrong according to the scriptures. Because a lot of times people got in their head like when well, we're dealing with sisters, they think it's nothing wrong with them wearing pants. But guess what? We didn't say according to the world. We say according to what the most high God says. He says something wrong with that. So guess what? They got to keep that commandments because like you was bringing out, I mean, that's a good point. How you dress. You can dress immoral or moral. You know, those things touch on a lot of types of things. And let's get that. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 23. The principles of right and wrong. Now, when y'all looking at these laws up here, uh, these section of, of laws, uh, and you, you ever look at the Constitution, uh, I don't know anybody ever looked at a Constitution before, or just look on the back of a, a, a piece of paper where they got some of the most big things that you signed. They have a section first, right? Which is what we have, sections. You have a section. You have these sections of laws. Up under that section, uh -huh. you have another category. That is what it's talking about, the Ten Commandments, all right? You got the sections, which are these sections. Up under those sections, you have Sub-laws. Sub up under those. Yeah, go up under that. Then you have you got Ten Commandments. Mm -hmm. And then all the other law, statutes, and commandments are put in the category under this same section. You got this section of laws, these categories up under them, and in, under those are the rest of the law, statutes, and commandments. Mm -hmm. Just like you would look at if you looked in a constitution. It's mm -hmm. got section such and such, uh, verse B, mm -hmm. title such and such. Same way this that's how our would be written. That's how his got his written like that. So that's how you gotta think about it. So when people be talking about uh the Ten Commandments, you know, that's all they're talking about. No, you got you got the section of laws, Ten Commandments, and then you got everything under there. That's why he said with just those two, everything is written upon. Exactly. Everything is on it. Yeah. It's like that's like if you got two pieces, if you got clothes in your closet, just because you go buy two pair of clothes, two new clothes, you don't throw your whole closet away. You hang them with the rest of them. Because just that's like, what he's even you. for instance, just called, you know, rape. Rape falls on up under murder. Mm -hmm. You know, because when you're doing it to follow our sisters like that, you're murdering that sister. Mm -hmm. You know, so that is a very high crime. You know, a lot of people would think maybe uh, a, uh, adultery or something, but no, that is murder. But uh, Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 1. Well, uh, Go ahead. Also, for the question you asked about the duck, the duck is unclean. Mm -hmm. Falls upon the swarm. Yeah, so so um, yeah. Uh, I looked that up a while back, so I said it's the same thing. Swarm, like, uh, like I said, it's been times when you ate that meat, and I remember when I first ate, it, I was like, this just don't taste right. You know what I'm saying? It was uh, greasy. I didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? I'm glad I did like it because I wouldn't. Have so people, right. the duck is unclean, so we cannot eat the duck, man. For you country boys out there, let read Don that up. Don Donald Bacon. Let Donald make it out. A lot of times you can tell. All you gotta do is watch what eat them ice hunt a lot. Yeah. And what they eat a lot, that's what you can't Don't eat. eat squirrels. No, don't eat that. You know, read that out. Where we are now. Uh Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 1. <clears throat> the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that is wound, wounded in the stone, or had his pervy member cut off. Shall not enter in the congregation of the Lord. Does anybody know what that's talking about? What is it talking about? Uh, yeah, it's manhood, but what what is it going into? It's really going into to bring it up to today transgenders. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Because your stones is your, your testicles, you know. That, that's not a, a, a unit, right? That's different from Yeah, that's different from a, you did that yourself. Okay, you yeah. know, you didn't have that so done too. Right? Yeah, you know, they had that done so they wouldn't be around all the king's arrows and his concubines. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of times, like King Solomon, he had a thousand wives. Right, Do you think right, he could get to all them wives? Right. So sisters will have needs sometime, will be weak in the flesh and see that eunuch over there like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, be looking at the brother, but then they like, damn, this brother ain't got no, 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 no rod. You know, so they couldn't do nothing with him. So that was safe keeping for the, uh, for the king. And, you know, he couldn't have all his seed. Think about it. Not by him. Eight hundred wives. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Uh, and you know, they didn't, they didn't put the women over there. So what they had is other men over. Yeah. There. And then when they had the other men, you had to. They can't trust nobody around him. So he he got a eunuch over. There. Exactly. So. He ain't got to worry about them messing with him. So verse 23, verse 1 is going to, guess what? That is immoral according to the Most High God. Like I said, that's going into your moral laws because like on some of your Bibles, mine got laws against sexual immorality. You know, and that's what that's going into. That's sexual immorality. Give me verse 2. <clears throat> we'll talk about something else that's immoral. Verse 2, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. And when I'm just reading that, man, that really is heavy. Because guess what? Esau is a bastard. I was just going to say, the Bible of the Most High calls Esau a bastard. bastard. <laughs> it, it, that's really two foes. It's going into our people, too, because that puts whoredom out of our nation. That's right. You know, our brothers can't be whoring out our sisters and vice versa. Sisters can't be whoring out themselves. So guess what? That's immoral, according to the Most High God. Matter of fact, jump up to verse and seventeen. That's why, that's why I talk about them entering in in generation because of you have that carry on, just like the yeah. problem that's going on uh -huh. today. Uh, well, I don't have a father, so the next man don't think he got to be there for his child. Yeah, and it's going on in the black community constantly at exactly. that time. They just ah, I'll forget that. You know, I don't got. I ain't, I don't need the responsibility. Uh -huh. So that's what he's talking about. That's why they can't end in, the, in, the, in the, that generation after generation because it's it's killing out the the what you call it uh building up a strong nation. Yeah, that's and really then what not only stopping that same thing from keep happening. Yeah, exactly. You know, over and over and over and over. But spread like a wildfire. Yeah. Fire, fire. Give me I'm, verse. I'll do this verse, verse three, man, because then we got to you got to take a shot at them uh, uh, more bites. More bites. <laughs> yeah, because please. guess what? All the stuff that they, they, if everything that you see that you got right now is hey, made in Japan, made in China. They fake everything in the world. They fake all the rice, all the food that they you get them. Is, Everything is fake that you get from them. Right. We'll see what the Lord said about it. Read that up. And the Amnon, uh, Ammonite. Got it, I got it. And, and an Ammonite or Moabite Japanese or Chinese, read on. Shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation uh -huh. shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Ever. For what? Forever. Ever. Forever. You know, so it's a done deal for Moab and uh Ammon too, man. And that's a lot of you cats out there thinking that y'all done got away with somebody marrying one of them either, uh them Japanese or actually most of them Chinese. A lot of Japanese, they ain't trying to mess with you. Exactly. But uh, they, they, you're not sneaking them in. You're not, man. You're not sneaking them in from the Filipinos. You ain't sneaking them in. They're not getting them. Read verse 14. This is another one that we like to touch on, too. Verse 14. For the Lord thy God walketh in the midst of thy camp. So it's very important that we keep seeing away from our camp, you know. So we want the most high to be amongst us in the midst of us. Read on. To deliver thee and to give thee up to the, up thine enemies before thee. Uh -huh. Therefore shall thy camp be holy. Read that again, huh? Therefore shall thy camp be holy. Guess what? That's keeping a moral law to have your camp holy. To keep seeing away from us, because when we have brothers de dealing in different types of sin, guess what? We vulnerable when we out there on those corner teaching. The Most High won't have a hedge of protection around us. Read on up. That he see no unclean thing in thee, and turn away from thee. Verse seventeen. Thou should not deliver unto his. Verse master. seventeen. Yeah, verse seventeen. <laughs> There should be no whore of the daughter of Israel. Read that again, huh? No whore of the daughter of Israel. Because that's being immoral when our sisters is whoring themselves out. That's breaking the moral laws. You know, because sisters are supposed to marry very trigger with one man. You know, we have sisters around here sleeping with multiple men. 
You know, that's why age is heavy in our community. That's why gonorrhea, all these STDs is heavy in our community. Just imagine we can stop that overnight if they apply the law of marriage, you know? And like we say, brothers got their interpretations, their own beliefs on marriage. Like we say, we'll get into that on another time. Read on, I nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Read that again. I nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Guess what? That's going into homosexuality. Sodomy. That's immoral to do these things. Because just a few years ago, guess what? You couldn't be a homosexual and be walking the streets like that. It, you would be embarrassed because that was an embarrassment. But now today, they living it up, man. rupaul it up, man. It's just okay. You know what I'm saying? Looking at you because you straight. Yeah. Man, that's you know. know. That's you know what my man. He passed the law. Yeah, he did. Uh, he did, man. Read uh, verse 18. That should not bring the hire of a whore. Guess what? It's immoral for you to hire a prostitute. You know, we shouldn't be doing that type of stuff, man. You know, you don't know what that sister got. Now they got some disease out here that you can catch even if you were a condom, man. It, most times not playing no games out here, man. Read on up. Or the price of a dog. Or the price of a what? Of a dog. That's going into the other nations, man. The other nations are dogs to the most high God. Read on up. Into the house of the Lord thy God for any vile. Uh-huh. For even the even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Verse 19. Thou should not lend upon usury to the, thy brother. And this is what you was going to the more going into a more uh you shouldn't. Uh, charge your brother interest yeah. if you loan him something. You know, that's immoral for you to do that, man, trying to get rich off of your brother pain. Because a lot of times, guess what? Even when we was in rulership, not everybody was uh, rich. Just like today in Esau King, they ruling the earth, but guess what? They got some poor Edomites out here, man. So we will always help our brothers out and not, not charge him interest. If you lend him $5, guess what? All he have to pay back is $5. You know, you don't do that. Read on, I Usury of money, usury of virtual, uh -huh. usury of anything that is lent upon usury. It is, but it's a flip side. Read verse 20. Unto a stranger, thou mayest lend upon usury. Hey, man, we can show us Esau interest rates out the roof, man. You know, on the other nations, Ammon and uh, uh, Moab, we can charge them all type of uh uh, usury or interest, you know, but we just shouldn't do that amongst our yeah, brothers. And that's that's how these other nations do us now. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They give us high interest rates. They don't have high interest rates mm -hmm. on their own people like that, though. See, but now, now that he that you that they bringing it out, and you can see why they're doing it. You know why? Okay, too. Instead of man, I'm tired of it. Well, you know why? Exactly. You know why they charging the light? Like, like Keep this. the commandments, man. Why you think we telling our people, man? That that helps break that, man. If we could just keep the commandments, man, the most high will start to fight for us. Reverse 21, huh? And that's one of the few laws that the uh, fake Jews really... Uh, yeah, they, they hold they, that they dirt. Really, they do. They use that law. Let's keep that one. Yeah, they, yeah. they make sure they keep that one because they only do for their own yeah, Exactly, people. man. They don't do for nobody else. They, they look don't. out for their people, yeah. for real. Reverse 21, huh? Verse 21. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord so, thy God. When you vow a vow unto the Lord our God, making a promise to the Most High God, man. Read on. Huh? Thou shalt not slack to pay. Read that again. Huh? Thou shalt not slack to pay. So guess what? When you're making a vow, guess what? You're making it to the Most High. You got to pay that. You got to follow through on your word. Your word is bond according to the Most High God. If you say you're going to do something, guess what? Do it, people. You know, that's very important in the nation of Israel. A lot of times brothers sell false dreams and promise something that they know they can't keep, man. Also, I said, keep your promises, man. Read on, huh? Man, I, I know that you're saying that, man. I remember I was at the church, and I remember uh, the, man, the, the pastor used to set these people up for so much failure, man, because uh, they used to pass out these envelopes. You know, you make a vow, $1,000 vow. People don't even just get an envelope. So they get that envelope, they just made a vow to the most high, not knowing that they can pay that back or not. Mm -hmm. So they go out there, and a lot of times, I remember a lot of them get them things. I had, I remember I had a bag full of them songs. Up. Thousand on this one, fifteen hundred on that one, three thousand on that one. Not because I wanted y'all get these. He done made me make a vow. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I was like, man. I had to repent when I came into this truth. I was like, man, what? I gave you all that vow, but I'm dang sure I ain't gonna go back and get that pastor. None of this, no 
3,000, no, none of that. But I had to repent because I was realized when I seen this, man, he was just forcing people to make vows. And now was people running out there and then he'll come back. Well, you know, you can't break. And they'll go and do whatever they can to try to get that man that money. That man, that, that it ain't the vow to God. God sometimes, when you promise God something, he ain't looking for the, the reward. He don't get reward out of the money. What he does is he said if you if you gonna hold you if you if you gonna hold to your word that you kept to me that's all he's looking at and that's all he's asking for exactly read on up uh, uh, for the Lord thy God you can start from the top start over verse twenty one verse twenty one when thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God thou shalt not slack to pay it. For the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee. Hey, the Most High God gonna want that thing eventually, man. Read on, up. And it will be sin in thee. It, read that again, up. And it will be sin in that's thee. That's what. When you promise something that you know you can't keep, that's what. That's breaking God's laws. So, brothers and sisters, keep your promises, especially if it's promises to the congregation or to the betterment of building up this truth. You know that's very important. Keep your word, Israel. Read verse twenty-two. 22. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. So if you know you can't keep no promise, guess what? Don't promise it. You know, plain and simple. What you got, huh? Oh, you, you were speaking on that. Uh, I think the book of Acts was a man and woman who uh, had cheated the money and dropped it on the spot. Yeah, the most I'll put you to dead. Like was, exactly. And, uh, like we say, you don't know where you stand in favor with the Most High God. Some people he have in high regards that can get away with a little bit more stuff than you can. You might try to get away with it. Most High put you to death right on the spot. So keep the commandments, man. You don't never know where you stay with the Most High God. Give me Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. Like we say, we don't sacrifice no more. Christ came and did away with it. That is the only law Christ came and did away with. The only way we should sacrifice now is with this. I read that. 13. Mm. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15. 15. Mm -hmm. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Continue. So the only thing we should be sacrificing now is praising to the Most High God, man. Continually, man. Constantly give the Most High God praise when you guess what when you're doing good or when you're in a in a lower state. Because guess what that's of the Most High too, man. He's trying to build you up to make you stronger. Read on up. That is the fruit of our lips. That is it. that lets you know that sacrifice. What it's talking about the fruit of your lips, the praising of God, waking up in the morning, thanking Him for waking you up, putting you on your way, thanking you for get, thanking Him for giving you another day to push this truth. You know, for your family, for your jobs. For the food that you bring in and for the congregation. Read on, huh? And the food of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Giving thanks to his name. Read on, huh? But to do good and to communicate, forget not. Hey, don't forget to do good and to communicate unto the Most High God. Read on, huh? For with some sacrifices, God is well pleased. Hey, he be pleased with that thing when you're giving him all the praises to the Most High God. Give me a. Uh, I don't want to touch it. Give me uh, Matthews. Because a lot of times they say that the laws is done away with. But like we brought out, the only law Christ came to do away with was the sacrificial law. That is the only law. Give me, what is it? Matthews 5 and 17. Look at St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 17. Think not that I come to destroy the law. Or the prophets. I am not come to destroy it, but to fulfill. But to what? Fulfill. Now let's get what Christ was fulfilling. Because a lot of times when Christians read that word, they get hung up. Forget everything else you don't read. I just stick to fulfill. Fulfill. He fulfilled it. Let's get what that fulfilling is talking about. Give me, give me Acts 3 and 18. Then give me uh yeah, Luke 24 and 44. Let's get what Christ, what that fulfilled Christ was talking about. Not what Negroes and your pastor done told you and what these theology schools done told you. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 18. But those things which God before has showed by the mouth of all his prophets 
that Christ has suffered, he had so fulfilled. Christ fulfilled of dying on that cross. That's what Christ came to fulfill, him dying. He didn't come to fulfill so Negroes can eat a pork chop sandwich. He didn't come to fulfill, now you can smoke cigarettes. Now that you can claim that you got grace and don't have to keep the commandments. Read verse 24. We'll give you another witness on that. I mean, uh, Luke 24 and 44. Mm -hmm. Write these precepts down, man, because you know what Christians, what they love to come with, a Christian apologist, apologist, or however you say the name. 24 and 44. Book of St. Luke, chapter 24, verse 44. These are the words which I spake unto you. I will as I Read it the top again. Missed that. Oh yeah, I, I got what's highlighted. Uh, and he said unto them, "These are the words which I spake unto you." Christ spoke the words unto the disciples. Read on. While I was yet with you, uh -huh. and all things must be fulfilled. Christ said that all things must fulfill. Him getting on that uh, that cross, dying for our sins, that had to be fulfilled. Mm. That's what that fulfilling Christ is talking about in Matthew five and seventeen. That's not coming to do away with the laws. Read on, huh? Which were written in the law of Moses. Which was written where? In the laws of, Mo Read in on. The law of Moses. Read uh -huh. And in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Concerning of him. That was the things that was fulfilled. Now let's get Matthews 5 and 46. I mean, John 5 and 46. The book of St. John, chapter 5, verse 46. Because all the people that I always talk about, that's the Old Testament. That's the Old Testament. The Old Testament is done away with. Let's see what Christ said. Read that out. For, for ye have believed Moses. Uh, uh, verse 45. Verse 45. Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses. Talking about the laws in the Old Testament. Read on. In him ye trust. Because guess what? They will always say they trusted in Moses. Read on, not. Huh? Or had ye believed Moses? Or if you had believed Moses, the Old Testament, read on. Ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. Guess what? If you believe Moses, you would have believed Christ, because Moses wrote concerning Christ. The, the Bible is the uh, Christ coming in the volume of the book. So guess what? Christ is even in the Old Testament. You know, so we have to keep the laws, and the majority of the laws, guess what? In the Old Testament, how do you know that? How do you know that you are doing wrong, or what God wants you to do? Because the laws tell you what to do and what not to do, so they don't give you a free license to just break God's commandments. Give me uh, the license three and one. Shall I read forty-seven? <clears throat> uh, read forty-seven right quick. But if you believe not. His writing. So if you don't believe the Old Testament, read on now. Huh? How shall you believe my word? How you going to believe Christ? Our praises, huh? How you going to believe Christ if you didn't believe what Moses said? That don't, that don't even make no sense. Christians love to cherry pick the Bible, man. You got to take on this whole Bible. Give me Galatians 3 and 1 real quick. That's the apologetic. Favorite, favorite book. Yeah, it's a favorite book. Don't even know they cutting themselves when they read these scriptures because this Bible has is not talking about the real Gentiles. This is talking about the Israelites that were scattered in Galatia. That's who that is talking about. I've never seen a people so proud to be Gentiles. Man. Yeah. I mean, I just heard T.D. Jake. We, I'm Gentile. Man, y'all bragging about that. And see, but the thing is, what they don't show you when he was on the small scale TV show, he came out and said that his people from the Igbo tribe, exactly. and he was a part of the 12 tribe. But when he got in front of his congregation, yeah, oh, we all Gentile, come on, brother, what side are you playing? Because it goes back to Acts, what we said. If he would have brought out and said that, guess what? The Romans or the Edomites today would have taken away his place and his power. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of times that's why they do that, man. To keep power and money, man. You know. And then on top of that, if, when he's talking about bringing them back from the, the Gentile state of mind, they won't be Gentiles going into this kingdom. They have would have come back to these lost statues of commandment. Exactly. So they won't be that. So bragging to be a Gentile, I have no idea why. Read that up. 
It says, oh, foolish Galatians. Talking about the Israelites that were scattered in Galatia. Read on. Who have bewitched you? Who had what? Bewitched you. Because guess what? A lot of our people out here is bewitched. We bring this up to today, man, in Christianity and all in these seven-day adventures. All these damn religions telling our people that they are Gentiles. People, Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, we are not Gentiles. We the Israelites that the Bible That's speaks right. of, man. Read on, huh? That ye should not obey the truth. That ye should not what? Obey the truth. Because they forcing our people not to obey the truth, the law, statutes, and commandments. Because that's what the truth of the Bible is. Psalms 119 and uh, one ver verse 142. Read on up. Before whose, whose Yahawashah had been evidently set forth crucified among you. Crucified what? Crucified among now you. Now read Galatians 4 and 4. Galatians 4 and 4. But when the fullness of the time was come, uh -huh. God sent forth his son, made of a woman. No, made of an angel. Made of a woman. Read on. Uh. Made under the law. Read that again. Made uh. under the law. Nowhere in the laws does it say that Christ's uh, mother slept with an angel, man. Made He was made under the law. That means, that guess what? They was keeping God's mm -hmm. laws. Read verse five. And uh. if he was made up under the law, then how do you think he was made? <laughs> you take an angel conceived. made him come on man and that's what that's going into i'm glad you said it's conceived read on huh? to redeem that hold up to redeem them mm -hmm. we got to hone in on these keywords christ didn't come for everybody man he came to redeem redeem them the israelites read on that were under the law now who was under the law was all nations and races under the law no, only one nation were under God's laws, and that's the Israelites. Read on, huh? That we might receive the adoption of sons. And guess what? Who was adopted? You read uh, Romans 9. We was adopted back into the fold. It's, it's all going into Israel, no matter how you cut it. You could cut it any type of way. And then and now, and that, don't you see the contradiction in the Christianity? We're not under the law, <laughs> but he's coming back for the people that's under the law. Exactly. So what is y'all saying? I know what you're saying. You ain't gonna make it to the kingdom. That's all you're that's saying. That's what you're saying. Matter of fact, let's get that. Uh, give me uh, Romans six and one. Because a lot of times they love us. We try to hit on the main points. We got. We under right. grace. We under grace. But they like to the tap dance. That's see. That's what they want. Yeah, that's what they, they want. To tap do. dance, man, through the scriptures, man. See, but when we, but when the real prophets of the Most High. The real Bible scholars that go out here and research this Bible and read this Bible, Bible diligently during the week and come to bring it to the people. Guess what? This is not for a joke for us, man. That, and hold up. Even more important, they do the commandments, That's man. Right, man. That's the most important part. That's how you get understanding. Read that up. Six and one. Yeah. The book of Romans, chapter six, verse one. What shall we say then? Most I said, what shall we say then? Read on. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Shall we continue breaking God's laws just because we got grace? You know, read on. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> God forbid. Hell no. Hell no. Read on. Huh? How shall we say that? How shall how we? How shall we that are dead into sin? Live any longer Live therein. any longer, man. Give me Titus chapter 2, verse 11. Because we got to understand grace is just a time to get yourself right, people. That's all that it is. That's not a free time to just do whatever you want to. Right. A free license to sin. Because that's basically what, what people want. They want to continue. Hold up. Right? They want to continue to break God's laws, man. Read this, I. Right? And hey, that's what you get with Israelites that from people that actually read their Bibles, man. It may be looking like Dead Sea Scrolls up here, man. You know, all types of stuff, man. Like the rest of read that out. Uh, the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 11. Uh -huh. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. All men of Israel. Read on. Teaching us. Hold on. Read on. Read that again. Teaching us. Grace is. Teaches us something. Let's read what that that is. Read on. The denying ungodliness. Grace teaches us to deny ungodliness. Ungodliness is going into sin. Read on. And worldly lust. And worldly lust. Read on sin. Read on. We should live soberly. Grace teaches us to live soberly. Read on. Righteously. Righteously is the keeping of God's commandments. Deuteronomy six and twenty five. Read on. And godly 
in this present world. No, in the ancient time. In this present No, that was back in the Old Testament. In this present world. God cover every corner for you uh, Negroes that be trying to play semantics in this present world. That means, guess what? This present world is right now, people. You know, we should be keeping God's laws to this day. Uh, give me, what is Second 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 7. Man, read 13. Read 13. Read right? verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Yahweh Shah. Read that from the top again, huh? Looking for that blessed hope. Looking for that blessed hope. That's what grace teaches us to look for that blessed hope. Read on. And the glorious appearing of the great Yahweh and our Savior, Yahweh Shah. Man, that's what we're looking for. That's what that grace teaches us too. To have faith and hope that Christ is coming us to save us, to redeem us. That is under the law. What you got, huh? Yeah, I mean, you can go a number of places. You know, we just want to hit on them, the main ones. Like you say, for each precept, it's two or three witnesses or precepts to help explain that. So you can go a number of ways. Give me Second Timothy 3 and 7. Because this is the problem that people have in, in uh, Christianity. Read that out. The book of Second Timothy, chapter three, verse seven. Read verse six. Verse yeah. six. For of this sort are they which creep into the houses and lead captive silly women. Because guess what? Them pastors, pork chop pastors, pork chop pastors up in there leading captive silly women in them churches, man. Mm -hmm. And the church full of them. They women. full of them, man. They leading them captive, man. Read on, I. Silly women laden with sin. Read that again, huh? Silly women laden with sin. Silly women laden with sin, man. Read on, huh? Led, led away with divers' lust. Read on, huh? Ever learning. A lot of our people be ever learning. Want to know the deep interpretations of the 12 flowers, but guess what? The 12 feathers, but you ain't keeping the basic commandments. You know, you got to keep the basic commandments. Then the most high will add that extra knowledge onto you. Read on, huh? And never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Read verse 7 again, man. Ever learning. Ever learning. T.D. Snakes, Creflo Holler. They uh, well-known theological uh, scholars. Ever learning. Read on. And never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. And they never able to get the true understanding of this Bible, man. Guess what? The true understanding is that we got to keep God's laws, man. And with that, we say shalom. 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 Give him a law. Yeah, shalom. give me a law. About 12 of them. That's how I do it on that No, I want to read this. I got one. Give me Exodus. Uh, we'll just read give me Exodus. Give me Exodus 23 and 4. But this is something that, you know, we got to learn to do, too. You know, it's very important. Like we say, we keep this one law. Guess what? It won't be black on black crime. You won't get mad when a brother step on your uh, $2 Jordans. You know what I'm saying? Or cut you off in the uh, to get a parking space. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 4. This is the law. If thou meet thine enemies ox or his ass. Hold on. If thou meet thine enemies, because guess what? It's two sets of enemies in the Bible. It's the enemies of the other nation, and guess what? It's the enemy of your own people. You know, read on up. Or or his ass going astray. So this is talking about the enemy of our own people. Read on. Thou shalt surely bring it back to him again. So if you meet your enemy, a brother that you don't get along with, guess what? When you see he in trouble, guess what? We are still commanded to help that brother, man. Right. Read on up. And that's what he's talking about when he's talking about forgive your enemies. That's what enemies are. Exactly. That's the enemy he's talking about, the enemy of your people. Read on. Thou shalt surely bring him back to him again. Uh -huh. If thou see the ass of him that ha that hated the lion under his burden and wouldst forbear to help him, thou shalt surely help him. Guess what? When you, even the brother you don't, dis I mean, you do disagree with, guess what? We're still commanded to help that brother, man. You know, like we always say, we appreciate you, brothers and sisters, subscribe. We keep subscribing. Keep helping us push this truth to the four corners of the earth, man. You know, helping us in any way that you can. Send it in donations, you know. Help us push this truth, man. You know, so we can help get up after this captivity. And with that, let me say shalom. Shalom. shalom.